When it comes to horror, there really is a wide variety of what fits into the genre, at least according to the experts I reached out to. What do you think? I think you're talking to yourself again. And even in board games, you have slashers like Last Friday and the new solo game from Van Ryder Games, Final Girl, or creatures that come in all shapes, sizes, and forms like Fury of Dracula, Arkham Horror, Kingdom of Death Monster. There's even psychological horror games like Mansions of Madness and Dead of Winter. Over the last few weeks, as I've been pulling horror-themed games off of my shelf, I know what you're thinking, this isn't a board game shelf, this is just a shelf full of DVDs and all kinds of knickknacks, but honestly, nobody cares what you think. Over the last few weeks, as I've been pulling horror-themed games off of my shelf to figure out what it is I should talk about for the month of October, for some reason, I didn't grab Tainted Grail or Gloom of Killforth, two games that are actually at the top of my list of all-time favorite board games. And why is that? What is it about those games that makes me think that they are not horror? Maybe because they're not? Even Board Game Geek categorizes them as fantasy, though the blurb for Gloom of Killforth does say, a card game of high fantasy with a gothic edge. Hmm. Isn't gothic just a fancy way of saying horror? Even the movie Gothic is a horror movie. Since this is probably going to be my last video for October, I thought I should sit down and chat a little bit about how much I love when gothic horror meets high fantasy, and the two games I have in my collection that I think do it best. Tainted Grail Fall of Avalon was kickstarted back in 2019 and fulfilled earlier this year. There is a retail version available, though I think it might be a little hard to track down, and it's kind of pricey. Comes in probably around 150 Canadian. Is it worth it? My opinion, definitely yes. There is a lot in the box, not just story-wise, gameplay-wise, but with the components. And these are really high-quality components. We have dual-layered player boards, high-quality cards. I love these little clear cubes. And of course, some beautifully designed minis. There's already a what's in the box, a solo rules video, and a full gameplay of the tutorial scenario on the channel, so be sure to check those out. To break it down, Tainted Grail is a storybook, choose your own adventure, dudes and dudettes on a map, Ameritrash, exploration game. It's got a lot going on. The story is a mix of Arthurian legend and Celtic mythology. This isn't that movie Excalibur from the 1980s. Their magic is Merlin. It's honestly an extremely bleak and dark world. And down there in that darkness, I see a lot of unfathomable horrors. Tainted Grail is one of my favorite games, but I was unsure of whether or not I should include it in my top 10 list for October because yeah, I guess I was looking at more straightforward horror type games. Um, but really when it comes down to it, there's so much horror in this game, from the character designs, creature designs, storyline. A lot of times with these hybrids, one genre outshines the other. And is this a horror game or is this a fantasy game? I would say first and foremost, it's a fantasy game. But it is also a horror game. It is a fantasy horror. And I would put those two together to describe this. but. Honestly, when it comes down to it, it should have been on that list. And sadly, if it would have been on that list, it would have pushed off a smaller game like Lucidity, which I also wanted to talk about because sometimes a lot of these smaller games get overlooked. In Tainted Grail, Fall of Avalon is actually just the first campaign. The game comes with two other campaigns in a stretch goal box. So these are the campaign books over here. This is Fall of Avalon. Then we have Age of Legends and Last Night. I think they actually get bigger and bigger as you go through them. But Age of Legends and Last Night are two campaigns that were stretch goals. And in that stretch goal box, there's also other characters you can play. There's a whole set of map tiles. So the first campaign, The Fall of Avalon, is kind of what you see here in front of you. And the other two campaigns pretty much have this and more in that stretch box. So the amount of game you got with the Kickstarter was pretty extreme. In retail, some of these things might not be available. Well, I have seen the Red Death, which is another expansion. I don't have that one. And there's also the Monsters of Avalon, which is just a collection of miniatures that you could get. One thing I have heard a couple people complain about with Tainted Grail is these men here statues and how the dials count down to darkness. And to avoid that, there's kind of like items you have to collect. It's almost like a ritual you have to perform 
to relight the statues so that you can keep exploring. Because if the statue goes dark, most of the map tiles are no longer available for you to explore. That ends up being kind of a grinding process, but it depends on the type of player you are. That's actually one of the elements that I really like about this game. This isn't a fast paced game. This is a game that is slow and methodical in how you have to play it. This game takes time and it takes total immersion. And if you're that type of player and you like high fantasy, you like horror, you like dark gothic tales, Tainted Grail has all of that going for it. But even though it's not on the top of my list, let's call it a bonus for a, an amazing horror themed solo experience that you should take a look at uh, in the month of October and in any other month of the year because horror is not a one month kind of affair. It's an affair that lasts a lifetime. So Tainted Grail Fall of Avalon is not just a great horror themed board game. I would say it's just a great board game period, a great board game experience. And it is a great hybrid of those two genres, high fantasy, gothic horror. And it brings them together in a perfect blend of storytelling and player engagement. So it's totally worth checking out. And now we're down in the dungeon taking a look at Gloom of Kilforth. This game is created by Tristan Hall and published by Hall or Nothing. And when they call it a card game, honestly, all it is is cards. Your map tiles are cards, your encounters are cards, your items, spells, everything in this game is cards. Even the cards are made out of cards. There's also a sequel, Shadows of Killforth, and an upcoming Kickstarter for Call of Killforth that should be hitting sometime in 2022. The other games are more kind of like spiritual sequels. I think they follow the same mechanics and thematically are somewhat similar, but it's not like there's a storyline in this game that continues into the sequels. This is a game that provides you with a world, a quest, your character, their class, their allies, how everything connects and how the story plays out is totally left up to you and your imagination. It's great at giving you everything that you need and allowing you the room to create all of that connective tissue, to build off of it, mold all that muscle and flesh to create your own story. It's kind of actually really unique and somewhat mind blowing with how it actually works. And if you take a look on Board Game Geek, there are some players who have actually written short stories of their adventure. The game is simple enough. You perform a few actions such as move, explore, fight, um, search, camp, and at the end of your turn, night falls. And during the night, you flip one of the cards and it'll tell you which location has fallen into gloom. So every night, one of the 25 locations here on the table will fall into gloom, which means you have 25 rounds before all of Killforth has been overcome by gloom and you've pretty much lost the game. Each time you play a game, you get to pick one of the sagas that's provided in the box. So here we have one, Casket of Souls. Every saga has four chapters and kind of like a final encounter. Once you've completed all of these in the solo game, you also have to choose an ancient that you could go up against. And throughout the game, the ancient isn't gonna make it easy for you to accomplish your goals. So every time you flip a night card, depending on what type of location is gonna fall into gloom, the ancient may be plotting against you in that specific location. So these plot cards come out and kind of start to cover the board. And if you don't deal with them, at the end when you encounter the ancient, those plots will come back to haunt you. You can see these plots as side quests that you have to go and complete, or else by the end of the game, you'll be overwhelmed with how powerful the ancient has become. Each element of this game really keeps you on your toes. So you can't just kind of fumble your way through a turn. Every turn counts and you got to plan it out. So when you arrive at that final combat against the ancient, you're prepared and you've hopefully completed a couple of those side quests, destroyed some of those plot cards to remove them from the board. So they don't give that ancient more power. Now, the strength of this game lies in the fact that it is kind of short and you could accomplish all the feels and benefits of a long campaign in a real short amount of time. When it comes to fantasy and horror, Gloom of Killforth really understands both. The ancients are horrible in their character design and abilities, even their names. There's the Marquis of Pain, Abyss of Penance. That's some Danzig level horror shit right there. But this world isn't all gloom and doom. This is more high fantasy, where Tainted Grail, I would call it actually dark fantasy. I know I referred to it as high fantasy, but that's dark fantasy. This is high fantasy. I don't want to call this a light game because it isn't, but there is light in this world. 
there's hope in this adventure, and that hope will keep calling you back to the game. The replayability of this game is high. You have many different characters you could pair up with different classes to set up in different quests or sagas that go up against different ancients. And if you're playing with a friend, you can play this co-op or even against each other. So if you're going to play a co-op, the setup is similar to the solo game where you end at an ancient one and whoever defeats the ancient one, everybody wins. But if you go up against each other, you're both trying to accomplish your saga independently of one another. So you can play competitive, you can play co-op. Sadly, this game is hard to find. It is currently out of print. But with the new Kickstarter coming next year, most likely there'll be a reprint coming out. And because it is a bit older, it's from 2016, there are a lot of used copies available. If you check out Board Game Geek, Facebook Marketplace, Kijiji, any place where they sell used board games, you'll probably be able to find yourself a copy. I ended up getting my hands on this copy for reasonably cheap um, because there was a local seller who had, you know, spent his time with it and wanted to get rid of it. Like with Tainted Grail, I really overlooked this game when I was putting together my top 10 list for October. And it's a shame because this is an excellent game. And I do feel like it is a horror themed board game. But once again, it is a fantasy horror game, not just a horror game and not just a fantasy game. It's a hybrid. Thankfully, next year I will have to put together another top 10 list for October, and I'm not going to be so elitist in my choices. I'm going to have a wider view of what I consider to be horror so that I could get more games like this into the list. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. But thanks again for hanging out, and I'll see you next time. Take it easy.